We are gonna say, first of all, we need to know my angle. We're gonna find that by saying 360 divided by my number of sides, which is five, which gives me what? 72. 72. I need to cut that guy in half. All right, because remember we create a triangle and then we have the um, apothem which cuts it in half. So I divide that by two to get the angle that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use 36 degrees here, all right? And remember it is opposite over adjacent. We actually use tangent here, correct? Um, but we are dividing. So they've given me one side length. I also need to cut that side length in half when I use this to find my apothem, right? All right, so my apothem is going to equal what? Apothem is gonna be half of my side length, which is what? Two. two divided by the tangent of half of my angle. That is my apothem, yes? Okay, and then I just plug it into my formula. One half apothem, which is two divided by the tangent of 36. That's my apothem. Times my perimeter. What's my perimeter here? It's 20, why is it 20? Four times five, right? So 20. And so if you plug, all, you can actually, if you have a large calculator, you can do it all together. If you do not do it step by step, obviously that's gonna be 0.5. Calculate what that is and round it, but make sure you show me your rounding. Um, and then you can put it all in like that. If you have a larger calculator, um, you can put it all in at once and you will get the 27.5 square inches. So, <clears throat> vectors are um, basically rays on your coordinate plane is where you typically put them. A vector has a length. The length is called the magnitude. Now, when you have word problems, you will find that they give the magnitude in like a, a motion. So, you can think of vectors as indicating movement. So, for this particular vector... You could say you're pushing a box up a hill, all right? Vectors have length, so how far something's going, or some, ca some cases, how fast it's going, miles per hour or boats, knots per hour or whatever. It also has direction, all right? So there's a specific direction that the vector is moving in. So we have length and direction. They notate it with a lowercase, and this little half arrow above it, all right? So if this were just a regular arrow, it would mean something different. You'll notice it just has almost a half arrow on there. That indicates it is a vector. You'll also notice that the coordinates have this crazy par um, parentheses. It's not a normal one. It's a little bit um, sharp there. And then you have an X and a Y. Basically, what this X and Y is telling you is how it moved. So if you go from your, your end to your beginning... That's your X movement from your end to beginning. That's your Y movement. And that's how your vector is indicated. All right. Now it is important when you talk about order for vectors. All right. You have an initial point, um, which is the tail here. It does not have the arrowhead on it. That's where you start. All right. You have an ending point, a terminal point or the head. Um, that is where the arrow is. So it is important that when you subtract these, you take the end and subtract the beginning, okay? So order matters because you will have positive and negatives when it comes to vectors, all right? We're not actually talking about um, length, which would be always absolute value. We are talking about direction as well. And so think about if you're playing football, right? Positive yards is going forward, the direction you want to go towards your goal. Negative yards moves you backwards. So order matters, right? Number of yards is the same, but order matters. With vectors, order matters because it is directional, all right? That's why there's an arrow on it. It's not a line segment. It is a vector, and there is an arrow indicating which way you are moving, all right? Now, I will say that typically when they give these, it doesn't matter where on the coordinate plane it is. You can always slide it and put it at the origin because when you start talking about direction, um you are just thinking from your beginning to your end. So if you know where you started from, as long as you know your movement, you can figure out where you end. Um, and so most of the time in word problems, they're gonna take this guy and they're gonna slide him to the origin. And you are gonna create this right triangle that you see here, and you're gonna use SOHCAHTOA to calculate some things that have to do with the vector itself, 
all right? So when they take, talk about horizontal and vertical components, they are referring to the X and Y. Horizontal movement is your left-right movement. So horizontal component would be your X movement. Vertical component, that is your up and down movement. So that would be your Y movement. So when you start reading these, they will say write it in horizontal and vertical components. They just mean write it in X, Y like this. All right? So let's look at this first example here. Express this vector in terms of its horizontal and vertical components and translate it to standard position. So what is it asking for? It is asking for uh, how do I move from the end subtracting the beginning, right? So if I'm starting at the beginning and going to the end, what's the movement look like? And where would this be in standard position? Standard position is if my starting point is at the origin. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to look in where it begins. What is that point? So I'm going to start right here. This is the beginning. And I'm going to say, well, that point right there is the point three, four. Right? One, two, three. This is three. This is four. This point here is the point three, four. We're going to say, well, where does it end? Well, it ends over here at the point five, one. This is five, this is one, so this point here is five, one. If I want it in component form, I am gonna use, they gave me the variable I'm gonna use, the component form of this is going to be my x values subtracted. I start with my beginning x value, I mean my ending x value, which is five, I subtract my beginning x value, which is three. So in vector form, this is going to be two, all right? My y values, I'm going to say 1, my ending y value, minus my beginning y value, 4. So this is going to be negative 3. So what does this look like then in standard form? In standard form. So you're always going to start at your origin for standard form. All right? And then your ending is going to be where this would be on your coordinate plane. 2, negative 3. So I'm going to go to the point 2, negative 3. And that's where I'm going to put my ending. Now remember, this is a vector, so you have to actually draw an arrow for it to be in vector form. And so I'm going to draw here, and I'm going to make sure I put my arrow head because that tells me direction. All right? So this would be the component form, 2, negative 3. This would be it on the coordinate plane in standard form. On the coordinate plane in standard form. And direction all right so we said it had two things it has magnitude and it has direction they have given it to me in standard form which means it's on the coordinate plane it's starting at zero and it's going to these points so magnitude magnitude is the length of the vector itself how long is this vector all right now if I wanted to know how long this vector was um, you can look and they show it to you in standard form at 2, negative 3. Now what you'll notice is they drew a right triangle. So I need to know how long that vector is. I can just use Pythagorean theorem to figure out how long that vector is. That would be the magnitude of this vector. So I could say, well, it's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's going to be the length of this vector. Because if I were to draw a right triangle there, you can see I have my two bases. I have my two legs, and I need the hypotenuse. And so if I were to do this in... Um, put it into my calculator and give me rounded to one decimal place, you're going to get 3.6. That is magnitude, all right? Magnitude is the length, then, of this vector, the length of this vector. So then they want direction. They want direction. Now, direction is, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, if they want direction and they don't tell you what it is, you're typically gonna do just a standard direction. All right, standard direction starts at your X here, all right? And it will go around like a circle from here. So if I want direction, um, I actually wanna figure out what this angle is. Think about in terms of navigation. If I were to navigate I would on a ship, I would use an angular direction because you're in the middle of nowhere, right? And you can't really follow a road. They actually use direction using angles. So from this point, 
how am I moving? They'll also use it with direction north, south, east, and west. So you'll see northeast, southwest, okay? So they're using directional movement. But when they say southeast, they're gonna give you an angle. How far off of south are you moving east? If they give it to you this way, they simply just want that angle that is created to the x-axis. So they just want to know how far below the x-axis you are. I have a ray triangle. I am trying to calculate this angle right here. I'm going to label this ray triangle based on that angle. If I label it, which side is the 3, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Opposite. What is the 2? Adjacent. Which trig function am I going to use here to calculate that angle? Tangent. Now remember, when you're calculating an angle, you use your inverse function on your calculator. Okay? If I'm calculating the angle, I'm using the inverse function. So on your calculator, you're going to use your shift or your second key. And you're going to say opposite divided by adjacent. And if you do that, you should get 56.3 degrees. Which tells me direction, all right? So magnitude is the length, direction is your angle. Your angle is your direction. All right, let's look at the second one and then I'm gonna have you do some. All right, they have drawn this again in standard form. Negative three, three. That tells me it starts at zero, it ends at negative three, three. If they want the magnitude, I am just going to use Pythagorean theorem here. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 18. When you plug it in, nearest decimal place is 4.2. That is magnitude. If I want direction, I want to know that angle. So I'm going to say the inverse tangent. <coughs> of 3 divided by 3. That is going to be a 45 degree angle. Tangent of 45 is always 1. So that means this right here is a 45 degree angle. Now you have to tell them what your movement is. So above, you'll notice it says above the negative x-axis. So 45 degrees above the negative x-axis. All right. If I just said 45 degrees, someone might assume that it's over here. Okay. Because it could be above the positive x-axis. You need to tell me where it is on the coordinate plane. Above the positive x-axis, below the positive x-axis, above the negative x-axis, below the negative x-axis. You need to tell me where it is. All right? Look at the general statement here. To find the magnitude, a couple things I want to point out here. Magnitude is noted. It looks like the absolute value of that V. So when you see that notation V, with that absolute value looking thing, they want the length or the magnitude. The formula is simply your a squared plus your b squared. So if you have it in component form like this and you want the magnitude, you're going to take the square root of those. That is your magnitude. So you need to know that formula. To find magnitude, you take the square root of the x squared plus the y squared. The first component plus the second component. To find the angular measure, to find the angular measure, or the direction is how it's going to be listed in the problem, you are going to do the inverse tangent of your y value divided by your x value. Your y value divided by your x value. If it's like this, they have b over a, but they're just talking about the y portion of your component form divided by the x portion of your component form. It will always be that way because of right angle trig. All right.
All right, so once you have it in component form, you are going to use that to calculate your magnitude and your direction, all right? So for the first one, we're gonna look at six, all right? To calculate my magnitude of my U, right? I've already gotten the component form. I am just gonna take the square root of that X and square it plus the Y and square it. So I'm just gonna say the square root of 16 plus four, which is the square root of 20. And you can plug that into your calculator, all right? And get one decimal place. Square root of 20 should be about 4.5 about 4.5, all right? To calculate then the direction, you are going to calc just do your tangent, inverse tangent of those two numbers, but you must put the y value in the numerator. So you're gonna say uh, the tangent, and you can say negative two <coughs> divided by four, but it may give you a... So if you put it into your calculator, it gives you a negative, um, it's telling you it's below the axis. You can actually always use absolute value here, meaning you can just do the tangent of two divided by four. You don't have to put the negative in, all right? But you have to think about where it is. Why would I put this second part? So if I put this in, it actually gives you negative 26.6 degrees. If you were to put in just two divided by four, it's gonna give you a positive 26.6 degrees, but we're gonna say direction here. So 26.6 degrees, why do I know it is below the x-axis? Let's look at my x and y value here. Four, negative two. If I were to draw that, four, negative two. This is my ending point. You can see that it's going to be below the positive x-axis based on where it is drawn on the coordinate plane. Does that make sense? You always start at zero, you end that, this component form right here. So then without even doing it, what, where is this two, three going to be? First, second, third, fourth quadrant, where is it going to be? Right, two, three is going to be right over here somewhere. Two, two, three, right? It's going to be over here somewhere. Make sense? That's why this guy is above the x-axis. You would still do it the same. You would say the inverse tangent of my second value, my three, divided by my first value, my two, and you will get the 56.3 degrees. But to tell me where it is, you need to think about where it ends on the quadrants, in my quadrants, okay? A boat is traveling 20 degrees west of south at 36 knot. Express the vector modeling as velocity using horizontal and vertical components. There's a lot going on here, all right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're actually going to draw your coordinate plane. So you want to draw your axis here, your X and Y axis. All right, hopefully you know north, south, east, west. If not, all right. north, south, east, west, okay? So it says west of south. Where is that? Right, west of south, yeah, and it's 20 degrees. It seems logical, but you're gonna go south, west of south, it's right here. All right, so when it says 20 degrees west of south, what it's actually telling you is the angle, well, I don't want it to look like that, that's hideous. Okay, the angle here is 20 degrees. All right, 20 degrees west of south, okay? 20 degrees west of south, okay? Anytime you're doing these, you really want to do it to the x-axis, okay? So if that is 20 degrees, what then is this right here, and how do I know? 70. How do I know it's 70? Because that whole quadrant is what? Every quadrant is 90, right? So if I know part of a quadrant... <laughs> I can just subtract from 90 if I go, need to go to the x-axis. So this guy here is 70 degrees, okay? They want my horizontal and vertical movement here, my horizontal and vertical movement. So that means you're gonna use this line here. 
Okay, you're gonna use the 70 degrees and you're gonna use your Sokotoa for the 70 here, all right? So if I do that, so if I draw my right angle here, they want the horizontal and vertical movement. So they want horizontal movement, that's that movement. They want vertical movement, that's that movement. I have a right triangle. I am going to set it up using Sokotoa with my right triangle, all right? The other thing they gave me was this 36 knots. In navigation, when they give you a movement like that, they are giving you the hypotenuse movement. It is the magnitude of the vector. So when they gave me that 36, they actually gave me this length right here. They gave me my hypotenuse length, 36. So I have this right triangle. They've given me the hypotenuse. I gathered that this was 70 degrees because I had that 20. And I need to know my legs. So I'm going to do Sokotoa. My horizontal movement, that's this guy. Vertical's that guy. If I label it based on this 70, the Y is going to be my opposite. The X is going to be my adjacent. And I can use right angle trigonometry to figure it out. Let's start with my opposite. My opposite. Which trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So the sine of 70 degrees should equal my horizontal movement over my hypotenuse. That's not degrees, right? Which means my, my vertical movement here is going to be my hypotenuse times the sine of 70. That's always going to be my vertical movement, my up and down movement. So then what do you think is going to be my horizontal movement? Which trig function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine. Cosine is going to be the 36 times the cosine of 70 degrees. And that's going to be my vector right there. My vector is going to be my hypotenuse times the cosine and then hypotenuse times the sine. That's my X movement and my Y movement, okay? Now, here's the thing. When I plug it in, if you plug this into a calculator, this is going to just give you 12.3. This is going to give you 33.8. I have a problem with those two numbers right now. If I have 12.3 and 33.8, does that tell me the quadrant that I'm in correctly? Where would you assume those two numbers would be? Which quadrant? Quadrant one, two, three, or four. Which quadrant? Just looking at that, it looks like it should be in quadrant one, right? Positive, positive, right? If I go over 12 and up 33, I'm gonna be somewhere over here. Where do I actually need to be? Down here. So what do my values need to be? Both of them need to be negative, right? They both need to be negative. So to correctly put this in component form, I need to make those negative. This is why you need to draw a little sketch of it. You need to draw a sketch so you know where you are on your coordinate plane, all right? Negative 12.3, negative 33.8 correctly tells me the movement. Think about it this way. If they told me I was walking on a trail and that they walked 20 degrees um, west of south for 36 miles or whatever. And you need to figure out how to walk left and right to find them. You would walk left 12.3 and down 33.8. Direction matters. If I just said the positive and the positive, you would never find your friends because you would go right and up and you would be even further away from them. Okay. So that tells you direction. You must tell me positives and negatives so I know the direction, all right? That's why it's important. That's why those positive and negatives are important.